everybody, Phyllis Moore here, Philosophically Speaking. You might be hearing, uh, it's not even the pitter-patter of raindrops, it is the click, 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 rain on the roof kind of thing, and I don't have a tin roof, but as I am recording this, we are anticipating possible hurricane-ish, um, tropical storm, whatever. I guess it's all kind of in the same vein. So we might be experiencing some of the effects of that. And I was just out on a walk and thought, it, well initially I had looked at the app on my phone and, and, and thought it might be raining all day today, but definitely tomorrow. And in the meantime, I guess it changed overnight. So when I got up this morning, didn't set an alarm, figured, okay, it's gonna be raining, so scrap the, the walk, we can, can revamp, whatever. But when I got up, the sun was shining, it was a beautiful day, I went about my business, it looked like it might not rain possibly until this afternoon. That changed in the course of a couple of hours. I was almost to my house and it looked like it was, the sun was kind of, you know, got to kind of hiding behind the clouds. Still didn't think anything about it. I don't think I had been home five minutes before the rain started and there was rumbling and thunder and various things. The weather can change on a dime and you already know that. But uh, it just goes to show, you know, you can make plans, but life can interrupt, definitely. Uh, let me go ahead and invite you to click like, share, and subscribe, and kind of follow along on every day is a different day, right? And I'm sure you have that experience as well. Changes like the weather. And what I read this morning was something that reminded me. It's a simple little Bible verse reference, and it's gonna be my challenge for you as well as myself today. And the three components of it are, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Wow, right? And I don't want to generalize or generalize and say, you know, as a girl, I, you know, whatever. I don't want to, I don't want to go into that. I don't want to stereotype anything, but I know I can be more emotional and more passionate and reactive than my husband. And that may have nothing to do with anything other than the way we are hardwired. And he tends to be much more even, much more, he, well, he just reacts differently to things than I do. And when I have had a knee-jerk reaction to something that, you know, someone else says or does, and I will want him to match my level of <laughs> angst and anger. And he doesn't, he doesn't always do that, which is really good, by the way. I mean, I would love for him to go and pile on and say, yes, they're horrible, they're beasts, they're you know awful, we are right, we don't like them. But instead, it's nice to have someone that will help ration it down and say, you know what? Don't let it affect us, don't let it rob us of our peace. You know, let's just kind of look at it a different way. Doesn't make me wrong, whatever. But I had an illustration over the weekend and I'm hoping he will not mind me using him as an example because it taught me something. And that is that there have been occasions where it might be a child, it might be an adult, it might be a coworker, family member who has said or written or expressed a thought or an opinion or what have you that has upset me or bothered me or made me mad or I have inwardly held on to it, haven't dealt with it or haven't talked about it or haven't worked it out, you know, whatever. And we all handle conflict differently. We, you know, so a lot of us don't like to have confrontation or, you know, c conflict with other people. So we find other creative ways to deal with it and not always in a healthy way. That being said, my husband had a situation with someone and it was not going real well and it upset me when I heard him talk about it and he said, it's fine, it'll blow over and you know, I think it'll work out. But I was thinking, oh, this could go badly. This could go really, 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 really badly. And I was expecting and bracing for combustion and the person showed up at, at the house and I went, oh no, oh no. And I just went into overdrive and prayed and prayed and prayed, please let this be resolved, please let it be resolved because I didn't want hurt, I didn't want fist fights. And there wasn't, you know, we're not living in the wild, wild west where they pull, you know, they had a, um, 
they met at the OK Corral and, you know, marched 14 paces each, turned around and shot at each other. That didn't happen. But I was really braced. Maybe, and again, I don't want to gener generalize or genderalize and say, you know, the wimpy girl in me was like, oh no, they're going to fight. They'll never be friends again. But that's where I went. And instead, they were gone, you know, for a while. And when he did return, he basically, I guess he got to express what he needed to say. He was heard. The other person said what they needed to say. It didn't come to blows. They didn't say things they'd regret. Oh my gosh. You know, and I'm not saying all men do this or all women do this. I would never stereotype. We are all human beings and we get to choose whether we're going to go into overdrive or whether we're going to say what we think and we feel. Not attacking, not putting people on the defensive, that kind of thing. And he said something that I thought was very, very cool. And he said, nope, he said, you know, we, we said what we needed to say. He said, but some of that, we just needed to blow off some steam. They went to neutral corners, they returned, they talked about it. Ah, oh, I applaud and admire that so much because we can have a make or break scenario with people or groups of people or family members or whatever, and it can be a turning point in our lives and in our relationships. So that was just a good nugget of truth. And I'm going to conclude again with the main thing that I read that God instructs us to do. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. If we follow that, you know, listen, hear the other side, hear their heart, don't overreact or react, you know, before we need to, just listen. Think before we speak and be slow to anger. I'm sorry, that's huge. And I'm going to conclude on that because that is a mouthful. And you need to chew on that and digest that and see where we need to go with that. Because it's not even about the other person. It's really about our quality of life and having the peace within ourselves we'll be happier with with ourselves we can live with us you know we can't necessarily live with someone else we can avoid that but we need to have peace within so i encourage you to let that be a balm a blessing you know something a gift for you today don't forget to click like share and subscribe thanks for tuning in catch you later bye